Hmm. Good morning. Good afternoon, I should say. Hey, David. Good morning, Professor. I mean, good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's hard to tell when you don't leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let me just get everybody in the room. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me uh, just take a minute or two just to get everybody in. Rose first waking up today. <laughs> no, just life is exhausting. <laughs> I start really early. I, I'm typically like at it by six, six in the morning, seven. I'm I still letting people in. So thanks for being patient, everyone. I had a class at 10 a.m. and I am very much not a morning person. Oh, really? My earliest ones start at nine. But, uh, okay, I think we're mostly here. Okay, um, so before we go have a look at the handout, as I traditionally do to get us off the ground, uh, just to be clear, it's video week. And uh, that's probably gonna extend into next week. So um, I have a bunch of things to say about that. Just give me one second there. Um, I love video editing, you know, just wanna say, and I've had a lot, a fair amount of experience um, doing exactly that. It's uh, one of my favorite, favorite art forms. So I always look forward to teaching this. Um, we're gonna go into some detail and we're also gonna make a couple of tiny movies. Um, which is, um, you know, exciting. And really even making a movie, a one minute movie with uh, just a couple of different clips uh, teaches you so many of the essentials. You know, I wanna say I have a, a buddy of mine who's a, a, a professor of um, video in general and uh, also amongst the most successful filmmakers that I know personally. Um, this guy does a lot of commercials really, but his interests are larger than that. Um, but he was saying to me once, you know, it's interesting, you could teach a whole semester about video editing specifically and go very far. You could even teach an advanced semester of video editing. But he goes, when it comes to really telling a good story uh, through, through the movies, he goes, really the essential steps you could teach in a day, you know, which is pretty interesting. You know, it makes you wonder what goes on in the more advanced video editing classes. And uh, it may be special effects, which is an entire subject but we're gonna be focusing at least at first on um, the, the three basics. Um, and, and those would be these. One, how do you take a variety of clips? I think most of you know what I mean when I say clips, but I am gonna come back and be more specific. But footage, you know, the, the, the film people shot all kinds of things and they may have even shot a half a dozen takes of the exact same scene, you know? Um, so how does a person get through that and how do you actually assemble what the audience is going to see? So the first thing is um, how one actually assembles the selected parts. You know, that's the heart of video editing. But on top of that, um, what about bringing in the music? And uh, what about bringing in the title? You know, the text for the title or the credits for that matter, or even closing credits. Um, so if you want to look at it that way, I would say the, the, the basic thing is those three parts. The editing is by far the biggest. That's the actual assembly, as I keep saying, of the clips, uh, my favorite part. Uh, bringing in the audio is not that difficult. And, and I have a, a bunch to say about that. And uh, creating a title sequence at the beginning is also uh, not that difficult. But allow me to back up just, just a little bit. Right, and, and I, first off, actually, before I go further, because I, I get overexcited about this, um, since most of you have cameras working today, can you show me by a show of hands, two of you without cameras, you could use the reactions on the bottom. How many of you guys have Adobe Premiere right now, or, you know, access to Adobe Premiere? All right, so that's the vast majority, that's great. Um, oh, more hands went up. So that's great. Of course, this will be on vid video later today. Uh, your group has it easiest. The videos generally go up fairly fast because I, I don't teach anything right after you. Um, so uh, you'll be able to review this stuff. So in a moment, I want to look 
at the handout, which always reminds me of things I might otherwise neglect. We're going to make a tiny movie today, uh, Tuesday. We're going to make a slightly larger movie on Thursday. And unless I choose to um, change the plan, which I sometimes do, um, we will do one last movie um, next Tuesday, which will actually be a combination of uh, in-class and homework. So um, just to simplify this, today, relax, learn, enjoy. Thursday, the same. You know, see what you remember. I'll add some stuff. We'll make another movie, different footage. Uh, the, but the only reason why I ID is because I've been FD'd out anyway. What, what happened? A mystery voice. I just... Oh, sorry. I was talking to someone else. My bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Brennan, I saw lots of big smiles coming from you, and I kind of assumed it wasn't for my class, but... <laughs> you know, school, after all. All right. In any case. <laughs> it's someone in that beautiful landscape that Brandon always takes class in, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> So anyway, the, the last video, which is the current plan, this is the way I usually do it, would be next Tuesday. We'll get started together, and then I'm going to let people loose. Uh, there'll be more footage and more opportunity. Um, for those, some of you I know are going into video, uh, so you're probably dying to get your hands on this stuff. Um, others teach themselves things and want to you know, find a place to put it bring those additional skills to the table. So there is gonna be that, that one homework. So really so far, there's just been one small homework way back in class four, uh, a larger project being the midterm. Um, and there's really just two left as it currently stands, that one video and one animation, which we'll talk more about later. It's another true love of mine, really, to be honest. Let me get a look at, um, you know, share screen and um, get a quick look I got some enthusiasm in the chat. Thanks, Diamond. A uh, yay is always welcome. All right, I'm, I'm gonna just, let's get to the handout though, because I, I forget stuff. It's really the truth about the handout is um, it's more for me than it is for everybody else. All right, so um, these have been stacking up. We've been together for a while. There's about 27 classes. It's not exactly the same every semester. And uh, this is typically about 27. So we're, we're far beyond half as it goes, you were like two thirds of the way through. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, yes, man. I think, sorry, I think you put, um, for me at least, it was the wrong link for, to download the asset. Oh, no you kidding. Download the assets of the class 16. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you put the link for class 16 instead of 17. That's right. Can you guys, you know, so um, I wanna double check something real quickly. I want to see if the one on the home page works. That was weird. This won't take me long. That one, I think it works. It's called video. Yeah, error. the link on the home page for the assets works, but you put the wrong one for the I handouts. Really? So you, you yeah. were able to get it from, because it's funny that it's not working for me right now, which is very peculiar. But, um, you know, give me just, just a second here for, I don't want, you know, um, People come late and I don't want to have to keep stopping to explain it. So this will just take about an instant. I'm um, typically very fast at this kind of thing. I shouldn't have said that. All right, so. I'm amazed this doesn't happen more often, to tell you the truth. Uh, there we go. I'm sorry for the delay. I, I know some. I don't know if any of you took MMP 100 with me or not, but uh, this is uh, 
one side of web design right now. I'm connecting to my website, which I think is somewhere in Pennsylvania, the actual computer. And I'm quickly getting to our school. There we go. You know, one second, I got to multitask. There we go. All right, so I'm inside. I just got to drag that in there. There we go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That wasn't teacherly of me. Oops, you didn't hear that. Okay, hang on a minute. Nope, didn't hear that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I appreciate that. I meant OG. Oh, All right. All right, let me just double check. You know, get back. There we go. All right. Um, just a quick word, by the way, about all that. If uh, if you ever look at my handout online and you feel like you missed something, you know, like just now I made a correction, just refresh your browser. So, you know, if you're ever looking at a handout, you have a suspicion something's off, just refresh it. You could click uh, the little refresh button. I think you're all familiar with it, circular arrow. Also, most programs let you do Command R, most browsers, or Control R. I'm in Chrome right now. Okay, can everyone be sure that you got Class 17 assets? They're going to be critical today, Class 17 assets. So I've been told by very helpful people here that it's still on the home page is correct. Uh, but it wasn't correct on the handout. So either way you get it is fine. While people are doing that, let me just move on, make sure I don't forget anything I want to tell you. I did want to mention um, just a couple quick things. Um, I'm sorry that I have not graded the midterm yet. Uh, school is fierce. Teachers often don't get to the classes in, in the timeliest way, even though I, 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 I try because it's really better for you. But I, I'm hoping to actually grade these tomorrow if all goes well. Um, quick interjection, but I'm hoping to early vote tomorrow. And uh, yes, this is a plug from your sponsor. Please vote. I wouldn't dare tell you who to vote for. That would just be completely wrong of me, right? But I'm sure you must have passionate feelings about wh who you think deserves to, um, you know, try to mend this country, right? Um, I'm doing early voting. You could always search your zip code to see if there's an early voting location. Just because I think election day is going to be a madhouse, I don't think I'm prepared to stand there for like six hours. Um, it may be more like one or two hours if you strike it on the right day. And there's probably something right near where you live. You just search early voting. Anyway, off topic. All right. I want to do. I do want to mention this though. This is for anyone who's interested. Uh, the school often does these. Um, uh, free additional meetings on, on subjects that relate to people in the media arts. Uh, now we've moved them on to Zoom, at least for the time. And this one is about freelance careers, freelance creative careers. Um, and it's going to be on Monday, November 2nd. So I, I think that's the coming Monday, actually, at 4 PM. And this is a link that gives you all the information about it. You know, I don't want to claim to know anything about this particular talk or who the experts are. But I would say in the past, they've had viable experts, uh, you know, once or twice, I actually knew the speakers personally, and they were like top shelf professionals, so I was pleased. Um, the whole idea of a creative career um, that's freelance is something I do know about. Um, so, you know, freelance means you're not working for one company, it's not nine to five. Um, so, um, you know, video, ed video editors may get freelance work, web designers certainly get freelance work, graphic designers get freelance work. Uh, you, a lot of you might prefer the idea of a nine to five job. You know, you have your own desk and all that. Uh, that never suited me. <laughs> so I've never done that. Um, and they could tell you how that's done. How do you get the clients? And, and uh, I've, I've done it myself. I also had an agent for a while. That was a pretty sweet deal. The agent took half the money I earned, which sounds nasty, except for that uh, she got me ridiculously high pay per hour you know, clients I was never able to find myself. So I still did great. And every dollar I made, she made a dollar. So I don't know, we'll see what they have to add. For anyone who's interested in that kind of lifestyle, you might want to uh, check out that link I included. And uh, let me know if it's any good. If any of you go, I am kind of curious to get your impression. I really don't know more or I would field questions about it. I, I know about working freelance, but I don't know much about the meeting. This is all the usual. 
looks like everybody was pretty clear on getting Premiere in advance. Ooh, excellent. So I don't have much to say about it. This is the usual stuff. Um, you know, quick word, when we were doing audio, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about using Bluetooth headphones and um, just about no one in the class was using uh, Bluetooth. So I didn't really need to go through it. Also, some of you might just be experts on the whole Bluetooth phenomena. If you ask me, it's often really finicky. Um, I have Bluetooth headphones that always work. I have Bluetooth buds that only work half the time. Any case, if you do need to know more, there are notes about it on an old handout, and I just included that link for anyone who might need it. Quick word, though, about headphones and video. This is much less audio intensive. So if you're in the habit of using headphones, like, like John, you know, and others, Alex, um, you know, go right ahead. You don't feel like you have to for this particular part. It's this is going to be mostly video. Okay. Let me say what I need to say before we get our hands on it. First off, from modern culture, I would say the, the, the most popular art form on planet Earth is probably still music. And I would think ever since radio was born and uh, the old vinyl records were born, um, you know, music took the lead. It wasn't always the number one art form because music was hard to get. Can you imagine being around 200 years ago wanting to listen to a song? You know, wh what were you going to do? You know, you would hopefully you'd be able to sing or play an instrument. But other than that, you were just counting on if the local saloon had music, you know, and uh, it, music was the exception to the rule for most of human history, as, as, as important as it is to culture. Theater was even harder to get at. Uh, but as we all know, you know, 100 years ago, 100 years ago and change, um, broadcast media changed everything. You know, and because of the birth of broadcast media, suddenly we listened to more and more music and we watched more and more theater, right? So I want to obviously talk more about theater uh, than about music, but your generation and mine, uh, we're actually overloaded on this kind of stuff, which frankly, um, a guy in his 50s, I could testify, you know, when, when I was uh, 18, as some of you may be, um, you know, it, music was still not everywhere. I could walk into a restaurant and not be forced to listen to their terrible taste. You know, right now, I, I find it a hardship that music is over the top. There are times when I, I want to find a place that's silent. All right. Same goes for video, though. I don't know you guys well enough to know if any of you are capable of being in silence without entertainment for 30 minutes. Now, I know some of you probably read. Should we count reading? No, no, let's let reading go. <laughs> but when it comes to time-based entertainment, right, music and video, what's happening to us now is we're losing the ability to concentrate because we need the constant entertainment candy. And we all have phones. So it's like the second thing silent, everybody whips out a phone. And by the way, this isn't judgment because I do it and it sucks, you know, but all the same. As much as I'd like to say more about it, I want to be fair, right? Let's just talk about it in, in, in the right framework, right? Obviously, video, film, TV, all those things that use video editing are important to most of us. They're definitely important to me. It would be fun for us all to write down a list of our favorite movies and why and share that list with each other. You know, uh, it really would be fun because most of us have passion and feelings about it. But here's where I want to jump in. Who makes that stuff, right? And what are the roles and why am I choosing the video editor as the star of this conversation? So just wanna say very quickly, you know, when you name a director, like if I say George Lucas, I think a lot of you know George Lucas. If I say Steven Spielberg, right? A lot of you guys and even know Steven Spielberg. If I say Martin Scorsese, any of you guys know his work, Scorsese? Any Scorsese fans? Yeah, I got, got, I got a couple people, right? Uh, he's probably one of the most respected American filmmakers. How about David Lynch? <laughs> Eddie, you got weird taste, man. <laughs> I say jokingly. David Lynch is also one of the most respected American uh, filmmakers. Uh, Spike Lee. Anybody? Spike Lee fans? 
right? A genius, by the way. You know, really, if, if you have not seen any Spike Lee, please go go to the beginning. Go see Do the Right Thing, his second movie, Do the Right Thing. Uh, Jim Jarmish. Come on, Eddie. Do you know Jim Jarmish? Eddie, I, I pegged you a taste, and, and you also. <laughs> you have to look up this guy, Jim Jarmish. Just pick a movie you like. You, you'll, be, you'll be so glad that I even mentioned him. Jim Jarmish and Spike Lee went to school together. They're only um, a couple of years older than me. So I would bump, I, buy, I bumped into Spike Lee at a bar, you know, <laughs> you know, for example, before he was too famous to do that. And they went to school together and they both proved, they, they weren't friends, but they proved to each other what can be done with no money or very little money. And it kind of changed the map of movies and not all these million dollar projects. But what about the video editor? Okay, guys, in case I lost anybody, this is what I wanna say. Often it starts with the producer. Now, what does the producer actually produce? Sometimes nothing but money. But a real producer, a hardcore producer, might be the one who had the original idea. So bear with me for a minute, right? Nobody go make this movie, right? Because I'm, I'm spilling something good. Here's a movie for the future. Turns out that the COVID germ is conscious and it comes from another planet. One of our space missions didn't realize they brought it back on the hull of the ship. The coronavirus spread around. I shouldn't say this because it's going to be on YouTube. I might be responsible for the next um, ridiculous theory. But in the science fiction, I want to say out there, YouTube, this is not true. COVID is an alien taking over our species. It's a good idea. So if I was the producer, what would I do next? I'd find a director who's willing to direct it. Their main job is going to actually be on the set, you know, directing the actors, but there's obviously a lot more. So that basically means I'm going to need somebody else to go find the actors, right? They're going to go send out word. They're going to bring in viable candidates, right? And uh, we'll start choosing the cast. What about um, the script itself? Does the producer write the script? So I, I want to champion two people in this story, right? The script writer who never gets credit in the general public and most people can't even name one script writer, even for their favorite movie. I mean, the one script writer anyone talks about now is Charlie Kaufman, who uh, did uh, Being John Malkovich, for example, and he also directed a couple movies. But the writer, so the producer might find the writer first. You know, look, here's my idea. It's like this COVID germ is conscious, comes from wherever, you know, you know, and uh, talk it up. And then the writer's actually going to write it, even though it wasn't his idea or her idea. And then it's going to move on from there, possibly to the storyboard artist, right? It's good. It could have, could have, could have a cartooning background or a graphic novel background. I've known people who do both. They take the script and sort of draw it out right, and uh, consult the director uh, or the producer about what their vision is, or both, for the movie. It, this, nothing's been shot yet. They're still looking for actors. And then there's the production people. I'm secretly in love with production people. They make the sets, you know, and the costumes. And uh, it's interesting how it most movies you watch, those sets are built. They're like in airplane hangars. We have a bunch of them in Brooklyn. Um, I personally love indie movies, low budget movies, uh, which I know the most about. And what we do is we case out everybody who has a home or an office or a restaurant and constantly ask for favors, <laughs> right? But you know, so the writer in a way gets the least credit. Even the soundtrack people get more attention than the writer does. Isn't that weird? I don't care if Brad Pitt's in the movie, you know, if the script sucks, it sucks. Or whoever's famous now. You know. So anyway, finally everybody's there, right? The script's written, the storyboard's written, the camera people are there, the set is ready, the acting goes on. And say in this particular scene, uh, a teacher is talking to the class, you know, and then lifts a glass of water and puts it down. You know, maybe that director needed several shots. Maybe he wants to exaggerate that we're all already victims of COVID in a way, so that we're all taking a class in Zoom. And if the teacher wanted, if the if they wanted to make that point, wouldn't they need a shot further away to see the teacher at the computer talking to his students? 
it wouldn't be great to cut up close to you guys in a grid and then show some of you at home at a long shot to see how we're all living these separate lives even while in class? The thing is to make that simple set of points would require a lot of shots. There might be a long shot of each of us, including a whole body or a half shot from the waist up to include your computer. There'll be close-ups. Who puts it all together? The video editor, right? Now the thing is that video editor might work with the director standing right over their shoulder. Any of you wind up doing this, you wanna be fast. So the director says, not there, not there, cut this clip now. And you could cut that switch. We wanna to switch to a different shot. Let's go find a close up. And at your fingertips, you're looking through all the different options. You know, when you see movies about people making movies, they're always like, cut. You know, maybe the director says, no, not like that. I want you to cry, really cry. You know, really let it all out. Let's try it again. Okay, everybody, action, cut. So later on, someone's taken all those clips out, saving them, reviewing them, and assembling them. I don't know if any of you know um, Guillermo del Toro from Mexico, trying to, Pan's Labyrinth, you know, one of his most famous movies, but he also did Hellboy and uh, a bunch of horror movies. He's, he's weird. He does art house movies and, and sci-fi and horror. Um, and uh, I think he's brilliant. Um, but he'll shoot, now listen, listen to this. He may shoot 300 hours, 400, 500 hours for a two hour movie. 500 hours of footage for a two hour movie? For one, somebody's gotta look through all that stuff, chop it into parts. And that's what I mean when I say clips, right? Take one that are just disqualified and throw them out. But if they're three equal candidates, make sure that they're all saved. And that might be the editor who helps with that. But at some point, you're gonna dig through clips, choose the best, figure out which ones you could mesh. A uh, quick word. The movie Annie Hall, which was Woody Allen's, um, probably to this day, his most famous movie, uh, very funny movie, Annie Hall from the 1980s. Um, according to Woody, it stunk. It was a terrible, he, he was very disappointed with the first edit. And it wasn't the editor's fault, it was his. The editor said, you know what? I just have a different idea for your movie. If you let me loose, I, I think I could use the same footage and make a better movie. And he did, and they won every award in sight <laughs> in massive chunks of America and all of New York City, you know, went to this movie when it came out and it was the editor's brilliance who rethought it. So it's something I wanna give you a taste of today. All right. Let's get started. What I'd like for you to do is locate those assets. And I always say this, right? Go find the assets you downloaded. Make sure that you've ex extracted them if necessary so that you have a real folder. Now, class 17 assets is actually a folder called athletes-vid-assets. Now, I don't like working in downloads, and I always say that. And today, I'm going to make a bigger deal out of it. Now, I know some of you are in the VAT department. You're going to be doing a lot of video. I want to say something to you specifically. You have to be really uptight about where you keep your clips. There's two big reasons. One, if you lose one clip, you're going to break the entire movie. The movies are not embedded. It's a little like HTML. You know, you lose a photo from your images folder, you get a missing image icon. Now, video is even worse. So when you get clips, please know where you're keeping them and do not lose them. And if your computer gets sick, you know, this happened to me. I have to move an entire huge movie, thousand clips to a different computer, right? I had to make sure I had access to them that I could preserve. Video people in here, you're going to need a large, I'm talking terabyte, portable drive that works really fast and gets the best reviews. And it should just be for your movies, you know, just alone for your movies, a huge portable drive. You never work on your own computer if you're making a big movie. All right, right now we are, because we're gonna make a small movie. I'm gonna take my folder, Athletes Vid Assets, and drag them to the desktop. That's where I like to work. 
I'm going to the desktop and I'm going to go find that folder now. So again, if you have a different way you like to organize yourself, that is fine. Hang on a second there. I'm looking for mine. There it is. I'd like you to open that folder. Look, if you want to keep it in downloads, that'll work today. You know, it won't work as a career decision. Let me just get some stuff out of the way here. But just find that folder. Now, guys, I'd like you to watch this um, on my screen, if you wouldn't mind, because I, I want to point out some things about the four clips and the one audio file. We're going to start with this one. So you'll notice that swimmer is swimming forward, even though he's coming toward us. And if you have a really good eye, you might have noticed, look, there's the shadow of the drone. So this was shot from a drone. They just flew a camera drone in the pool. So um, the drone is going faster than him. There it is. <laughs> That's why he looks almost like he's coming toward us, even though we know he's swimming forward. That's going to be our first clip. We're going to move from there to this kickboxer. And um, she just kicked that bag really hard. She kicks it twice. This matters, by the way. Punches it, but now her back's to us, which I don't like a hell of a lot. And she continues to count, kick it. So I'm analyzing the clips even before I get started. One kick, I like that. A lot of action. Another kick, we see her, we see the bag. What Last punch is pretty cool, but then she's turning her back to the camera. And frankly, you know, you just don't see it much in movies. You know, people have their back to the camera only if it's important that they're back to the camera. They're doing something secretive or whatever. Usually, we're not going to show an actress from the back. I want to show you the next clip that I'd like to use, which is the bike. So the bicycle is not even in the shot. That's worse than not having, uh, having your back to the camera. Finally, he's in the shot, and there's a, a lens flare. You see all that sunlight coming into the shot? That's called a lens flare. And yeah, so he pokes his head out now and then. I, I could live with that. It's just a very long clip, and he's doing the same thing. He just keeps writing. But watch how he says goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my fans. I love you all. He kisses his hands up in the air, right? And that's the end of that clip. So I have to say, any of you going into video editing, you're going to spend a lot of time just looking at the clips. You want to understand what it is that you're working on. What's the virtues? What are the flaws? I'm going to come back and say more about each of these as we make those decisions together as a group. All right, you all know where your folder is, right? OK, we're going to move forward. I'd like you to open Adobe Premiere wherever you keep it. right? And by the way, if you're not sure where it is, I could kind of understand that if you just loaded it. You could just search your own computer. You know, For example, on a Mac, there's a magnifying glass in the top right. And I could just write Adobe Premiere, spelled like that, I-E-R-E, -E. All right? So I'm going to ask you to find that program and launch it. And just give that a minute to load. Hey, listen, I, I want to apologize for not going um, you know, slower, because some of you guys are, are uh, much faster than others. Others are newer to the computer or newer to this level. I know some of you had issues finding folders and stuff early in the semester. And I hope by now you're a little better at it because it's the 21st century. You're going to need those basic skills. There's no way around them. All right, folks, can I ask you, listen, I know some of you are taking video editing right now, <laughs> right? So I, what I'm hoping is that I share some things that your teacher didn't. Uh, this is going to be guerrilla editing, right? So I'm not going through a million preferences or anything like that. I, I'm very specifically going to go, on the fly. All right. So, give me one second. Hi. Just making sure it wasn't a home invasion. All right. We're good. Okay. So, once you're here, you could either click New Project or do File Menu, New, and choose Project. The choice is yours. I've been trying to get everyone used to File Menu New because it exists in every program. Now, there's a couple things we need to do in this next window, so I'm going to ask you to wait. But I do want you to get to know the term project. So in Adobe, 
Premiere Pro, each file is ends in .proj for project. So it could be mymovie.proj. So not HTML, not PSD, not JPEG, right? So you're actually making the project. The project is yours as the video editor, right? They're not easy to share, right? So it's going to be mostly one person that's going to have it. And that's the thing that needs access to all the clips and all the parts that you just can't lose. The first thing I'd like to do is give the project a name. So let's go up on the top. This is the only program that I give a name right away to my projects. Mostly everything else I'll save later. All right, so I'm going to call this Athletes. Hang on one second there. Got to let somebody in. So I'm going to call this one Athletes Today. Athletes Today. And there's one more thing that we have to do. This is very nerdy. I have to tell I have to tell the project where the folder is. Because if I don't, it won't find the clips I need or the music I need, right? And everything's going to break early. So right away, I want to tell it. Now, you should remember, did you put yours on the desktop? Is it still in downloads? And here's the way you tell the program. <clears throat> Here it says location, and it's probably pointing to the wrong place. So you want to click on the button that says browse. And I put mine on the desktop, so I'm going to start here. If yours is in downloads, you're going to start here. Then you want to find today's folder. Remember, it's called Athletes Video Assets, and double click it. Now you can click Choose. So I just got to say something. You know, um, I've been fortunate enough to probably have had several hundred, maybe more, video students. I used to teach video, experimental video, um, for years, right? So I did worked with all video people. And at this school, I've taught a lot of multimedia people. And one of the most common problems is people messing up their folder structure. You know, like after class today, you can't go moving parts out of that folder, right? So we want to be devoted to the folder. All right, so it goes. But that's all. You give it a temporary name. You click Browse, and you find the root folder and click OK. I want to introduce you to what you're looking at here. There are four sections. I may call them quadrants. They could be moved a little bit, you know, as you see me doing on street. Guys, can you give me a minute? I just have to. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. Okay. Let's talk about those four quadrants. The one in the lower left is called the project window. This one's a little different than the others because you're often going to switch to other tabs like effects. So we're going to be using both of these today, project and effects, but it's the project window you're concerned with now. If you don't see effects there, don't you worry about it. We'll get to that later. Now, above it, um, is the source window. And I want to show you something real, real quickly online. Notice here on the handout, I go into detail about the project window, the source window or source panel, timeline and sequences. So you could review this later if you choose to. Now, what I want to say is let's back up to the project window. This is where you keep all the parts. Now, they're never embedded. They still link to the folder, but you don't have to go in and out of the folder once we set that up. So all the clips for the movie and the sound, and if there's any photographs and that kind of thing, they're all going to live in that project window in the lower left. The source window, which is above it, is where you audition different clips. So if you've like, okay, I, I think I need these three, 
you know, uh, this long shot and then a closer shot and then maybe an extreme close up, right? One at a time, you'll open them up at here, see if you really like them. And you're gonna make some very important decisions here in the source window. You're gonna learn, you're gonna do it in a matter of minutes. In the lower right is the timeline. Man, this is gonna look a little like audacity, right? It's a timeline with a playhead and everything. And you're gonna see how you put your clips in order there in that lower right. In the upper right where it says program, that's like your TV. You know, you actually watch the movie that you're making in the program window. So four panels to that really kind of rule. Left is project, we're gonna get clips. Source is where we're gonna work on those clips. Timeline is actually where we assemble the real movie, right? And then in the program window, we watch. Let's try it. All right, so to get started, we wanna get some stuff in the project window. So we're gonna to go to the file menu and we're gonna choose import. File menu, import. Again, this is kind of like Audacity. It should know the folder that you assigned your project in the first step when you gave it a name. So if you notice, mine is sitting on the desktop where I put it. Okay, here's what you want. The one on top is the project file you're in now. So you don't want to import it into itself. But you do want bike, you do want kickbox, you want the music, and you want swim. Now on a Mac, you could hold down command to click more than one. Hey guys, on Windows, how do you click more than one? What what should a person hold down? Uh hold shift cool. and then click. You hold shift, click one end, and then click the other end. The other end. Is there any way to click them out of order on Windows? Mm -hmm. I would not know. No. So shift works on both computers, if you like that approach. A command lets you go out of order, which can be very handy for this kind of work. So I, don't, I, I imagine um, it would probably be the control key that you'd use on Windows. But in any case, that's not important. I want you to select everything but the project file, but the Premier project file, and click Import. So you notice you just populated uh, the project window. It's got a tiny scroll bar that helps you kind of look around in there, right? And uh, there are little examples, little images to tell you about your clips. Did that work? All right, so file menu import is a basic of a lot of programs that have a timeline. You know, so when we get to animation, we're going to be making our own parts. So we won't have anything quite like this, right? But really, in, in, in video um, programs, they're all going to have this. Now, I want to start with the swimmer, right? So I want to show you how we do it. In the project window, I want you to find swim.mp4 and double click it. All right, when you double click something from the project file, you're ready to audition to see if you really like it. And you're also ready to make decisions about where, what part of it do you wanna keep? You probably won't wanna keep the whole thing. You don't wanna hear the director say cut, for example, right? So we're definitely gonna to wanna to cut the clip ourselves. Now folks, I wanna share something with you, video people especially. Have you, do you know the magic of JKL? You do? All right. So some people do. JKL. So if you look at your keyboard, find those three letters, JKL. They're right next to each other. J is rewind, K is stop, and L is play. And I want to show you more things they can do, but let's try it. JKL. Right? I'm a righty, so I'm going to have my three fingers ready to go. Click in the source window. Notice this blue little thing here. That's the playhead. Could you press on that and drag it to the left? I'd like for you then to try out the L key. And play it. Press K to stop. You can press L anytime you want and press K to stop. I'd like you to try the J key to rewind. So I want to say something. I use Adobe Premiere a lot. I used to use Final Cut in its better days. It was once a superstar, not currently. Um, I've used some Avid, 
which is a very big program, they all use JKL, right? Uh, so this is good to know. I want to show you one thing I love about JKL, a couple things. To play forward, you know it's L, but what if you tap L more than once? It's fast forward. J works the same way. If you kick, every time you tap it, it goes faster. Slow, faster, faster. All right. You're going to need that because if that clip is 10 minutes long, you're going to go absolutely crazy just looking for the one minute you actually mean to keep. All right? So you need to shuttle back and forth on the timeline. Is fast forward working? How about fast rewind? It's also working. Yeah. yeah? All right. Great. And listen, guys, don't be shy. Even if something's working for everybody, you know, if, if one thing's not working, you know, speak up. Because there are other ways to do it, but JKL's the best. You know, frankly, those of you going in the field, if the director is giving you instructions, you don't want to be fumbling around this stuff by clicking little buttons and things. Your hand's there. You're going to just be moving around without even thinking. It's just JKL. But what about slow motion? And we're going to need slow motion in a minute, so I'd like you to try it before, beforehand. So if K stops, is that all it does? No. If you keep K down and add L, in a second there, I'm going to just bring my playhead back a little bit. All right? So if I hold down K and add L, I'm going very, very slowly. All right? So I'm moving forward on the timeline, despite how the swimmer looks. If you hold K down and hold down J with it instead, it's slow motion rewind. So the trick is you're kind of keeping your foot on the brakes when you're going forward or in reverse, and that just makes you go slower. That's critical for what we're about to do, right? I'd like you to rewind your movie to the beginning, and I'm going to just hit J a bunch of times. And I want to show you something. I don't really want to include uh, the beginning of this shot. I want to get to the point where his head is just inside the clip, just beneath the ceiling there, right? I want to start the movie with this clip, but I want to start with it right here. So I suggest you hold down K as you forward, or if necessary, rewind, to try to find this moment, right? His head is just inside. Now, how do we actually tell the program to start there? This is critical. It's called an endpoint. Now, how do you set an endpoint in most video programs? Well, if you look over JKL on your keyboard, you'll see I and O. I means endpoint. O means out point, the end. Now, if you found the moment you want, I want you to tap with your same fingers. I. And things look a little bit different. You could tell the source window showed you a grayish area that's establishing that you didn't start at the beginning. You know, by the way, you could change your mind as often as you want. Just reset the endpoint, right? But I know where I want it, so I'm going to back up again and set the endpoint. Now, I want to set an out point, and then I want to tell you uh, a little bit about why this is so critical, because there's more than one reason, right? So let's check out the rest of the clip going forward. So I'm going at regular speed right now. He's swimming, right? The camera, though, is shooting in such a way that he's, ab he's about to go off camera. And I have a lot of footage of just the pool and the shadow of the drone, which is going to give a lot away, right? So what I really want is this. I want to end right after he's out of the shot. So I'm getting in the ballpark using JKL. And then I'm going to go forward in slow motion to see when he's completely out of the shot. I don't really care about his hand sticking out. But I can go a little further. Hang on a second there. When, uh, when Zoom does something, it Premiere seems to flip out. Give me a second there. Somebody's waiting at the door. 
All right, we come back. All right, so again, your goal is to get him when he's just out of the shot. I'm being very picky. And then stop it and tap O. I'd like you to look at that little gray bar. You know, we, we're like kind of leaving out about 40% of that small shot. Right? And I don't even know how big it was on the original um, tape, right? Uh, but we're cutting it back even more. So I'd like for everybody to hear me out on this, right? Everybody, now I got a number of media people in here. So even if you're not going into video, the couple of you going into animation, the logic is very much the same. So I just want to say a little bit about why I go through this. Well, one, you want to know your audience. And if you're the master, you want to know yourself. What kind of action do you expect? So I want to say something, and I don't want to insult anybody, but the American audience has a very short attention span. And so they like a lot of shots per second. They may even ask you how many shots per second, or at least per minute, you have in your movie. And if you watch action movies, you know, um, the kind of movie where someone's hanging from a helicopter with a machine gun, right? They're going to switch shots endlessly. Boom, 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 boom. And what Americans like for that kind of movie is to cut close to the action, which is what we're doing. Right? We just cut close to the action. I never had the empty pool. Right? Just immediate swimmer. When the swimmer's done, I'm out of there. Now, look, I know we have varied tastes in this room. <laughs> and if you're an art house person, I want to ask you something. Um, any of you guys know this TV show? It was on Netflix. It was about a mafia guy who got relocated to, like, Sweden. It was advertised very well. It was one of the guys from um, a famous mafia, The Sopranos, actually. And they reworked that character and they put him in Northern Sweden. And it's a slow moving place. And the whole show had a much more European kind of feel about it. So if that character was gonna knock on a door, they would literally show him getting out of the car, walking through the snow. It could take two whole minutes for him to even get to the door. And, uh, you know, the audience was divided. You know, some people who like a kind of thoughtful pace that sets up a different kind of suspense, they didn't like cutting close to the action. And that show didn't. I'm trying to think of the name. Oh, well, can't think of the name. I think it's called Lily Hammer. Lily I thought Hammer. we were talking about Goodfellas. Well, you know, it, it's funny, very similar characters. Uh, but in Lily Hammer, um, a guy who's a major mafia guy spills the beans, you know, to the FBI. And part of the deal is he moves to Lillehammer, this remote, snowy, quiet, empty part of Europe. And it was utterly charming because, you know, he was a big time, you know, Brooklyn dude in, in a completely different environment. But I only bring it up because of the editing, really. And if anyone is attracted to what I'm saying, it is, I believe, still on Netflix. Um, funny, and it just has a different pace. You can really see how different it is from Breaking Bad, which most of you have seen, you know. Um, Another well, well made show, but a show that always cut close to the action. You know, a different logic. All right. Now, the thing is, you set your in and out, did you? Now, if you set your in and out, you're seeing extra footage here and here. And I'm going to call this the head and the tail. So I want to share with you one more reason why we do that. If you want this clip to dissolve into the next clip, fade into the next clip, literally merge into the next shot. You have to have extra tail end footage. The way Premiere thinks of it, it's gonna use extra footage to create the blend. So if your out point is too late, like it's way, way over here, you may not be able to join me on making that blend, right? That dissolve work, right? So I want to make sure that your out point is not all the way to the right. OK, we're ready to actually move it to the timeline. So this is the way you do it. You press right in the source window on the footage, and you drag it down to the timeline and drop it. I'm going to do it again. You just go to the source window. You press on it. turns into a little fist. You drag it to the timeline and you simply drop it on V1, right? That's like a layer, V1, it's a video layer. 
Now, this is kind of interesting. In school, we sometimes have a weird little problem, right? Where it just refuses to let people drag. And I don't really know what causes it, just on a few computers. So if yours is not letting you drag, I want to show you another way to get that selection to your timeline. The other way is this. Right underneath the shot are these two little icons that I'm circling with my mouse. The one on the left is the picture edit. That's the video. The one on the right is any sound contained in that file. Now this particular one has a gray sound button because it has no sound. So I could just drag the video and pop it wherever I want. But I'm going to delete that because I already have it. So this is what I'm hoping. We've seen a little bit so far about how the project window behaves. That's the one where all the clips are. We just saw how important the source window is, that one in the top left, right? Because you made important decisions there, right? You dragged it to the timeline, and that just makes sense, right? We're going to position these in time, right? And suddenly, the last window came to life, the program window in the top right. As I said, that's like a TV set. It's just showing you what the movie looks like while you work on it. So you've been introduced to the four main windows. I want to focus on the timeline for a minute or two. So if you look at the timeline, it has an odd kind of scroll bar at the bottom. It's dark. And if you go in the middle of it, you could drag it left and right. But what the reason I, what I want to mention about it is it's got these weird handles on the scroll bar. And I love them. If I grab this scroll bar, but not in the middle, by the right side handle, dragging to the right zooms out, but dragging to the left zooms in. So I want to repeat, if you click in that scroll bar, you're moving forward through your movie, and I don't have anything down here yet. So if I drag it left, right in the middle of that scroll bar, I'm back at the beginning. The handle on the right, though, will zoom out so I can see more clips at once, or zoom in because I want to focus on one clip. I'd like it to be around this big because we're about to move on. Give me one second, there's somebody at the door. Kevin was here just before. Um, um, so guys, listen, I, I understand people get bumped out. Their internet connection breaks or any number of reasons. So you often have to come back. Don't ever worry about it, I understand. Um, I can't always review, you know, um, for every instance of that. Um, Kevin, did you see me drag the footage to the timeline? Did you miss that? Um, actually, yeah, I did. I just I just have you on like my laptop and on my phone. But um, I thought it was like, because I'm doing remote access. So I thought it was going to be easier if I just put you on the phone and then put you on my tripod. Oh, yeah. Gee, Kevin, later on, I want to ask you more about your, your remote access experience. Oh, yeah, it was, it was very easy. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad I, uh, you know, Anne's used it. And Chris, Chris, are you on remote access right now? Yeah. Right. So, um, and is this behaving for you so far? So far, yeah. <laughs> you look the, only, the only thing is like, um, if you're doing a project, like for example, in um, brackets or um, sublime, it doesn't uh -huh. let you like um, refresh it into the um, page. Oh, really? Back, yeah. So, I, and, and I know Anne also knows, you know, um, to my mind quite a bit about remote access. So listen, guys, you'll keep me posted, but I'm pleased to know that um, we have this working. I want to back up just a second. I know most of you are with me, um, so uh, you don't have to do this, right? Basically, all I was saying is once your in point and out point are set, and that's really critical, you're ready to press on that movie and drag it right to V1. Once it's on the timeline, you might need to scroll to move forward or back in the movie. By the way, JKL also works here. But the reason I'm pointing out the scroll bar is this handle that I like. And that's the best way to zoom in and out of your timeline. All right. I want to get busy, though, with the swimmer. 
So I'd like you to go back into the project window. So we're back on the left, lower left. Oh, not the swimmer, sorry, we just did the swimmer. I want the kickboxer. So find the kickboxer and double click it. This is gonna be the first stage of editing most of the time. You know, if there were three shots of her that were the same angle and the same performance, you'd check them just to see if the actor was any better or if the lighting was any different. You know, she's got natural windows next to her. Um, so you might have to look for other things, even if it is precisely the same shot at first glance. We only have the one. So what I'd like for you to do is to um, drag that blue playhead in the source window over to the left. If anybody lost me, the first thing was to double click it down here to choose the clip you want to work on. Then it, auto, then it opened here. And we just drag the playhead to the left. Now, using L, I'd like you to play. Now, I want you to notice something. She's kicking it, but notice this action moment here. She got one leg in the air, right? That's cutting super close to the action. I, I probably wouldn't ever cut this close because the audience would just miss the impact on the bed. Thing is, I don't really need this whole windup. So what I'm looking for now is I'd like you to find maybe something around here. I'm going to set an endpoint there. And now, while you're doing it, I just want to say uh, a little bit more. JKL, JKL, JKL. You know, once I get close, I hold down K. And in slow motion, I'm finding the sweet spot. I really want to be blunt. There are master editors and there are just technicians. You know, the master editors, they just got a magic sense for what a particular movie needs from each clip based on its pace. If there was a kickboxer in Lilyhammer, I would probably rewind. I probably would have wanted her to walk into the gym. <laughs> you know, other, others completely different. We're thinking a commercial right now. In commercials, when you watch TV, if you watch like Hulu, for example, they're endless. Um, but you know, they're often like 30 seconds. That's a short amount of time to get a lot in. So anyway, we're cutting close to the action and then you have to hit I when you like it. So tap, let me get back in there, tap I. And you see that different gray bar. I'd like you to play through it from here. She kicks, that's good. She kicks again, excellent. Punch, excellent. Now her back's to us. So why am I making this big argument about someone not turning their back? I want you to count the number of times an important actor in a show turns their back to you. I'm telling you, you could watch for days before you're gonna see that. You know, it's just uncommon. I would like you to, to recognize though, you could be the one to break the rules. I love people who break the rules but the best rule breakers know the rules, <laughs> right? So I'm not saying this is a rule, I'm exaggerating. It's more of a tendency. I don't really want much of her back in the shot. She never turns around again. So will I wanna go a little forward from here or a little back? I haven't decided. See, none of this is important. That sort of is. So I think I'm gonna choose around here. We don't have to make the same spot. I want you to choose some spot. A little bit of the back is fine. So basically it's gonna look like this. Once she punches, she starts to turn from us and really about there, I'm setting an out point. So I got a lot of tail end of extra footage. So I wanna mention something. You know, how we started with the swimmer and I asked everyone to make sure that they set an out point a little early on the swimmer. Because if you want it to dissolve into the next clip, to dissolve into the kickboxer, right? So you want the swimmer to fade into the kickboxer, right? Look at my fingers here, right? The overlapping part is extra footage. So that means I have to have some extra footage at the beginning of the boxer if you want her to to merge with the prior clip. All right, so I hope you got an in and out that's inward and not all the way out to the edges, right? Let's drag her over to the timeline. So I'm gonna press on this and I'm getting a little fist and I'm gonna drop it back to back with the first clip. I do wanna mention, don't leave a gap. 
right? But don't overlap. Because if you overlap, you're going to actually overwrite the swimmer. You're going to lose the end of the swimmer. So it'll sort of magnetize right to back to back. Okay. I want to get in one more clip. It gives us a chance to go over those steps. And then I want to move into transitions, titles, and music. All right? And we have enough time if we pick it up a little. You got the basic steps already. So I got the swimmer. All right, and uh, here he goes. And then very kind of suddenly, it's the kickboxer. And we're gonna talk about those dissolves a little later. Right now, I wanna deal with the cyclist. So you can go back into your project window. It has a scroll bar on the right, if necessary. You wanna find the one called bike.mp4 and double click it. I'd like you to bring the playhead to the beginning. I want to make an argument from my point of view. I am going to start as soon as I see his face. And there are cases where I wouldn't do that. And I want to give you an example. Let's say we're doing a movie and it's about a murder, right? Or a set of murders that happens at a set of bicycle races, right? And in most mysteries, they invite you to guess who the killer is through most of the movie, right? I mean, that's what makes those movies interesting. So if you decided it was one of the cyclists, you would, couldn't wait to see that person's face get in the shot. And in that case, I would have started way at the beginning. Let that person wonder which cyclist it is. You know, they just ran away, you know, rode away from the crime. So in that case, I would leave this. But for a commercial, I probably wouldn't. You know, a commercial about a gym or about health in America. Okay, so I'm gonna play forward slowly. I'm holding down K and I'm pressing L because I think I'm pretty close to where his head comes in. Maybe I'm wrong. I think I'll just hit L. Oh, it's much further down. Once I'm in the ballpark, I'll stop and I'll use my K key to either rewind in slow motion. So I'm holding down K, I have to rewind. So I'm gonna hold down K and add J until his head is first in the shot. I like that composition a lot. So I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna set my endpoint right here. So I tap I. So this is a very repetitive clip. You know, I mean, for one, I think it's like three times as long as the other two clips, but I'm still interested in where it might end. So there's this part where he does this weird kissing behavior to my fans. You know, it's just, too interesting, and it's kind of a good goodbye for our movie. So I wanna find that and set an out point right after it. So I'm gonna play forward and fast, fast forward. So instead of just L, I'm gonna tap it, tap it again, maybe even a third time. And I'm observe, observing. I kinda of like the sunlight coming into the shot that was once considered wrong, but we're more tolerant of it. I don't mind his face going out a couple of times. I really don't want to lose this like uh, kissing thing that he does. Here it comes, I think. Here we go, kiss, ah, oh, my fans, I love you. All right, and I'm gonna stop. I definitely want a little tail end, so I'm not gonna go all the way to the end. So I'm gonna come somewhere around here. The decision's really yours. As long as you include that little kiss and then hit O for out. I think you know what to do. Once you've got your in and out, press and drag it right after the kickboxer. You know, I'm imagining a couple of you, uh, the timeline might get, might be kind of crowded right now because <laughs> we popped a lot of stuff on there, right? So you might want to zoom out on your timeline. And uh, I'm going to just mention that one more time. So remember the bottom of the timeline has this utterly unique um, scroll bar and it doesn't only just scroll, the handle on the right is excellent. If I drag that handle further right, I'm zooming back so I can see all three of my clips. All right. Got a little lost, give me a second. Where did everybody go? This happens sometime in Zoom, I actually lose, lose you. There we are, okay. I think I want to do just one more thing with the um, 
video before we start adding the title and the sound. Um, as I said, I think it's going to be really boring for the cyclist because we kind of got the audience used to some pretty quick action. Very little swimmer, very little boxer. Um, but I want the beginning of the cyclist and the end. I just don't like the middle. <laughs> so I want to show you what we're going to do. There's more than one solution, but I want to show you one. Can you see how the, the bike is about twice as long, nearly twice as long as the kickboxer? I think what I want to do is take out at least the middle third. So I'm going to cut the bike clip up right on the timeline so that there's three parts. And then I'm going to delete the one in the middle. So let me introduce you to the toolbar. In a very strange place, <laughs> the toolbar is here. Right? It's smack in the middle, right between the project window and the timeline. And you're on the selection tool right now this blue arrow. I'd like you to notice that because we're going to have to come right back to it. But I want you to go down to the razor blade. Now I got to warn you about this tool. Use it and then go back to the selection tool because you don't want to start cutting things by accident. Right? So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to go to this timeline till I'm about a third of the way over. And on faith, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to click right here. So I got the razor tool. I'm going to go about another, you know, third. In other words, I'm going to split what's left. And I'm going to cut again. So now I got three bike clips. I literally cut it into three parts. I use this tool a lot for all kinds of stuff. Now, once you've cut it with the razor tool, we need the selection tool to finish the job. So I cut two spots. I'm going back to that selection tool. So please remember to go back to that tool. And I'm going in the middle bike, and I'm going to click it, and I'm going to delete it. Now, obviously, there's more to do, but I just want to check on everybody. It's not always this easy, right? You know, but uh, this clip is very repetitive. And I, I want to show you something about what we're going to do first with that gap that we left. Right? And then what transitions can offer us? So here we go. If you want to get rid of the gap, click the gap. Believe it or not, the selection tool will select gaps. Then press delete again. So what you're left with is the beginning of the bike and the end. And we totally got rid of the middle. I'm going to repeat this real quickly. I want, I'm going to command Z to whole bunch. I began by getting the razor tool. And I made a decision to cut so that I have a middle third. Then I went back to the selection tool, clicked the middle and deleted it, clicked the space and deleted it. So here's the thing. Here's what that biker looks like. Watch closely. That was weird. So you could see what happens because of the cut. Now, I do have a plan for what to do about it, but I want to mention something. So you know, um, I want to talk to you about dissolves, right? And we're going to do a, a specialized kind of dissolve here and then a simpler one a little earlier in the timeline. So what about dissolves? One, the best dissolves, the best ones, communicate that time has passed. Hear this out. Imagine this, if you saw a red tricycle with a little boy, little girl on it, right? And she's riding like all hell on that little three-wheeled bicycle. She's like five years old. And let's say it dissolved into a race car. The race car is red, right? And there's a woman, she's got long hair and she's racing her car, right? Would you assume it was the same person? Come on, would you? Well, yeah. probably, yeah, probably. Right. And that's because you've been trained from a lifetime of watching movies of the shorthand of movies. A dissolve mostly stands for time passing. That's what it means. But I want to say, though, people also use it just to fudge cuts. These two cuts don't cut together well. So I'm going to soften them with a dissolve. We're going to do that today, even though I avoid it in my own work quite a lot. 
I'm going to use it now for the best reason, to communicate that time has passed. So let's do our first dissolve together. All right. I want you to take a look with me at the project window and notice that there are these other tabs, media browser, libraries, info, effects. Now I'm looking for effects, but it's possible that on your computer, you don't see effects. And if you're on a smaller screen than mine, right? Uh, you might only see just the project window or maybe just the media browser, right? Uh, if you're on a bigger screen than mine, you see them all at once. Well, here's a way to do it if you can't see the effects tab. This double arrow here, right? It's called a chevron, right? So I'm gonna double click this. I'm gonna click once, I should say, this little double arrow. And it shows me the list of all the tabs that work in this corner. So if I could, for example, I, I didn't even know that there's history, so I could switch to history that way. So if you see it, just click it. If you don't, go to the double arrow and click it there. We want effects. All right. Now, the effects that I want to talk about right now are not laser beams, right? No, no uh, lightsaber effects. I want specifically video transitions, right? So you opened up the whole effects area. There's a little folder in there called video transitions. I'm gonna click that arrow. And they've got lots of cool stuff in there and lots of terrible, ugly stuff in there. Some of these things are only good for wedding movies and bar mitzvah movies. Little page peels and stuff, which you might've seen. Little checkerboard dissolves. I want you to take a look with me at the folder called dissolve though. Now, even in, we went deep, right? We went to effects, then we went to video transitions. And now inside of that, we're going to dissolve. You see the one that says cross dissolve? That's exactly what we want. So I'd like you to just watch this for a minute before you try it. I'm gonna grab cross dissolve and drag it. And I'm gonna drop it right on the, the crack between the two bikes, the left side bike and the right side back. Be careful not to drag it just to the left or just to the right. It's gotta be directly over the scene. And it'll make a bridge going from one to the other. So you're finding cross dissolve here, pressing and dragging and dropping it right on the scene between these two clips. Now, for whatever reason in class, there's always one or two people and the computer's giving them a hard time. So uh, it could be happening to you. Did that work? Do you, you, it did? Do you see the little gray bridge I'm talking about that goes right on the timeline? So I wanna show you something about that. Here's the way it looks. So um, I'm um, backing up a little bit and I'm playing with my L key. Time passed. Now there's something cooler about it. The clip on the left, had some tail end footage that it's using to for this effect. The clip on the right had some front end footage. Remember, we cut out the whole middle. So it's seeing all of that as spare footage. The computer remembers that stuff that you cut out. And it's allowing you to dissolve depending on how much of that is available. So if you want a longer dissolve, which frankly is gonna feel like more time has passed, you know, like for example, if the clip on the right was at night, I'd probably want a really long dissolve. Here's how you do it. You get close to your timeline. So I'm gonna use this little handle here and get very close. If necessary, I'll drag the scroll bar over. I wanna focus on this. If there's enough footage to work with, it's gonna let you go to either end of the bridge and pull it further out. I got a very long dissolve now. So you wanna find the magic amount of dissolve because if you get carried away, it feels psychedelic and it's more like a guy bike riding on LSD than it is about time passing. So I want you to be kind of careful as you make that decision. How long do you want it? You grab one end, doesn't matter which end, out makes a longer dissolve, in makes a shorter dissolve. Okay, so listen, I wanna say something um, quickly. Usually 
when you're shooting the footage the first time or the director is shooting the footage, they have a good idea how they want to cut. So they're making very clear decisions on the set that's going to help the editor deal with it later. You know, for example, um, you know, maybe it ends with the person, you know, making a move like this and the next footage, next clip is somebody going like this, you know, or maybe I'm zooming in on someone with a red shirt and the next shot is a close up of a red car. So there's all kinds of ways to get the mind to accept a cut from one clip to another. But these are rather random. They don't really cut that well. So I might just throw in some fast dissolves. I want to show you what I mean. So here's the first cut. I go from the swimmer to the kickboxer. And it just doesn't work visually. You know, and the reason it doesn't is the swimmer's got a very strong vertical feeling, you know, and the kickboxer's got a very strong horizontal feeling. The colors aren't the same. There's nothing to join them. So while I don't like it, I'm going to drop a dissolve in there. If you want to join me, find that gap and drag and drop your dissolve right on the gap. And it'll produce something like this. And that's just right. I think I'm going to work with it. If you like it, you might want the same. Listen, I got to say something to you. I'm running out of time, but I do want to say this. Commercials, um, like trailers for movies. Um, I, I know a guy, I knew a guy who, that's all he did. His whole career was making trailers. What a great job. But really, the cheap trailers, they fade everything. Everything fades to black. It's one shot after another. And there's usually the dramatic drum. You know, fade to black, da dum Next shot, fade to black, da dum It's very dramatic, but it's boring. But I know why they do it. Those shots were not made to cut well. <laughs> so they're trying to find a way to make them work. Anyway, here's the kickboxer meeting the bicycle. That is just so weird. You know, she's in the middle, he's on the left. There's just no relationship. I'm going to use the same cross dissolve, drop it right on that gap. And this is what I get. Pretty good. You can lengthen them or shorten them as you see fit. All right. I want to do a title. So um, I'd like for everybody to save what you have, just plain old file menu save. Remember, if you were here at the beginning of the class, you already gave it a name and a folder, right? If you miss that part, when you do save, file menu, save. If you didn't set a name and a folder, it just opened up a window for you. And I highly recommend that you save everything to that one folder. All right, now, I want you to get back to the beginning. So I'm on the timeline here and I'm hitting J a bunch. Do some fast rewinding. I'm back way at the very beginning of the swimmer. So here's what I'd like to do. The pool is a very beautiful blue. And I'd kind of like to have the name of the movie. Um, let's, let's see, what do we call this thing? Athletes Today? Yeah, let's go with that. Athletes Today in big letters right over the blue pool, right? So one way to do that would be to drag that playhead to the moment you'd like to use. So I don't want the title at the very first instant. The audience is still looking at their popcorn and their cell phone. So I'm gonna drag this thing over and say, I don't know, maybe about here. So I'm gonna ask you again, and you can move it later if you don't like it, but right now place the playhead at a moment you think is reasonable. Okay, there's more than one way to make the title. And all over YouTube is advice about different ways to do it in Adobe Premiere. But here's one good way. Join me now. So make sure you placed your playhead. This is what it's gonna look like. Let's go to the file menu, to new, to legacy title. File menu, new, legacy title. And I, I want to stop for a second. 
Did everybody find it there? All right, good. Like, I, I know that some of you use this software and you might have an older version. This feature moves. <laughs> it, for some reason, every version, they put it in a different place. So um, in, in the current version, by the way, they just updated this, so, um, and I forgot to update mine. So you're all good? File menu new, legacy title? All right, great. So in that case, you have the option of making changes that we don't need, but one of them is you can name the title. So if you're going to have multiple titles, you'd probably name them. We're only going to have one, so I'm going to stick with this name. Just click OK. So what you're getting is a whole new window. And the window is looking at the clip at the exact shot you chose on the timeline. And that's why I asked you to move your playhead before we did this. So at this particular stage, what we're going to do, in a second here, is I want you to notice that the left has a toolbar. And I believe the blue type tool is already selected. So what I'd like for you to do is click right in the shot and write athletes. Now, once you've had that word written, athletes, I'd like you to look at the right side. And there should be an area that says legacy title properties. If it's hard to see, try moving the bar between them to widen it out. Possibly the right side, if you need it. I want you to find this area here that says font size. So all you have to do is press on the font size and drag left or right to choose a size. So we're looking at this inner box here. This is called the title safe box. It's helping me judge. Now, if that worked out, let's find a font next. One way to find the font would be to click here where it says font family, highlight the current font, and try the arrow keys on your keyboard. So, you just click in the font family, and you could use the arrow keys to, you know, try them out. Or you could click this little arrow and look at these little samples to make your choice. So we don't have a lot of time left, so I'm going to ask you to choose one quickly. Can you hear me? Oh. Guys, can you give me just one second? I'm incredibly picky about fonts, so I better stop. Let's see. I'm going to use this font called Rockwell if I have it. All right, now next, you still have the type tool. I want you to click somewhere underneath it and just write this now. Whenever you feel ready, see, the reason I want you to style the first word is the second word just comes in with the correct style if you do that. So I styled the first word to a certain degree, then I just click to make the next word. To position them though, you're going to need to choose the selection tool that this window has on its little private toolbar. So I'm in this window here, and on the left, I see my toolbar, right? I'm going to click on the top left to get the selection tool so I can move these around. I want to say a word about color. You could click on either one to change its color. Just make sure you're using the selection tool. And I want to say a couple choices about color. Is everybody OK? All right. Yeah. So about color. Once you select one of the words with the selection tool, if you come to the right, there's an area called fill. And there's two ways, at least, to change the color. I could click the white chip, of course, and just pick a color. I'd start from here, and then I'd move over here to say, do I want a dark version or a light version? 
So I start on the rainbow, sometimes called the spectrum bar. And then in the larger box, I choose how dark or light I want it. Now, that's one method. Another method, though, is to use the eyedropper. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click the eyedropper because I want to borrow some color from the ropes. So that's interesting. You click the eyedropper, and you can borrow any color that's around by just clicking anything you see. Now, that's a nice color. So I think I'm going to go with that for athletes. And I'm going to click this, get the eyedropper, borrow the ropes. I just want to mention one more thing. Sometimes a color is nice, but too hard to see. <clears throat> I might occasionally put a shadow underneath it. If you'd like a shadow under either of your words, make sure it's selected. And notice further down is a simple shadow. Just turn the box on. So we have a bunch of choices to make our title. OK, here's where it gets a little weird. There's no OK button. This is uncomfortable for me, even though I've done it many times. To leave this window, you click its own little red button in the top left. And then we go get the part in our project window. So this is what I'm saying. If you like what you see, right, come up to the top left of this title window and click the red button to close it. Now, it's still not part of the movie. So when you close it, we have to find it. And guess what? It's where the other clips are. So you want to look here for the project window. And remember, if you can't find that tab, that word where it says project, athletes today, or just project, just use the double arrow, this little chevron. So if you look in here, there's the original clips, the music, but there's also the title you made. So as soon as you put that title window away, you find the title here. How do you use it? OK. So I want to remind you, the first step was placing the playhead. So your playhead is waiting exactly where you meant to put this title. Now, so far, we've only used V1. Video people like the word tracks, right? Like Photoshop people say layers, right? So we want to use V2. It's essentially an upper layer. Watch this. I'm going to drag this. I'm not going to bother opening it in the source window. I'm just going to drag it and drop it on V2 right up against the playhead. So if you missed it, all I'm saying is don't bother double clicking it. We don't need to come back here or we don't need it in the source window. Just drag it right from there. Drop it on V2. You left yourself the playhead so you know where you meant to put it. And if you rewind the movie, you'll see how well it works. Shows up, stays there too long. And now it even overlapped my dissolve, which I didn't like. So how would you shorten it? If you want to shorten it, because mine really didn't look quite right. It just stays on too long, and the end is the worst part. Right? I just come right to the timeline. Watch this. I'm going right to the title. I'm press and drag. I'm simply going to pull it back right on the timeline. So I'm trimming it, not using an out point. I'm just dragging the end and <laughs> pulling it over. So when I play it now, I get this. I like the length of it. It was a little short, so I'm going to make mine just a bit longer until I get the length right. OK. Come on, second. Um, yes, I, I realize it's come to the end of the class. Uh, some people may need to leave. Um, I, I want to just mention a couple quick things, though, before, uh, you know, beforehand. I will talk to you more about the portable drives later. I realize that was a little vague. I got a question in my chat about it. Um, frankly, uh, we don't have time today, but the gist of it is I don't use the portable drive for a backup. 
I use it for my original saving. I have the drive in before I even start. I make a folder on that drive and I put everything in that folder. And in Premiere, I do save and I find my drive, not the desktop or downloads. But we can come back to that subject. I do want to say something about how, how jarring the title coming in is, right? Maybe it needs to fade in. Maybe it needs to fade out. Well, it turns out one easy way to do that is with the same effect we used earlier, cross dissolve. It wasn't made for this, but it works. So I want to show you what I mean. I'm going to go back to effects, back to video transitions, and into dissolving it. Here's cross dissolve. Look what happens if I drag it right over the very beginning. And then I drag a new one right over the very end. Fades in, I read it, it fades out just as the guy leaves. Perfect. Cross dissolve turns out to be ver versatile. You know, it is meant to cross, hence the name, cross dissolve. But since there are no other clips on this particular track, it's dissolving with zero opacity. It's dissolving with nothing. <laughs> so it dissolves into the void. It comes out of the void. Now, look, guys, I'm rushing a little bit, right? Because I, I want to just throw something in real fast, right? I promise to go into more detail next class, right? Um, if you can stay and you'd like to stay, stay a few minutes because I'm going to add some sound. If you have to leave, don't worry about it. Not only will it be on our YouTube video, but I'm going to do it again Thursday, right? So I'm going to drop in some sound right now. So I'm going to save as I go. File menu, save, or command S. And I want to go back to the project window because that's where the sound is. I just want to, I better look just to make sure I'm not alone. Oh, yeah, there are a few people here. <laughs> you know, have you noticed there are tracks on the bottom that start with A instead of V? And you guessed it, they're audio. They're for audio, right? So, so currently we have two video tracks, but we have no audio. A1 is empty. So I'm going to bring the playhead back to the beginning. And I'm going to go find my audio and drop it right here on A1. So the audio file is here in your project window called Music Sample. And I'm going to press and drag. And I'm going to drop it right at the very beginning of the movie. Now, I do want to do one quick thing. But let's take a listen. Oh, perfect. I loved it when she kicked the bag with that instrument. plug in in a minute. But um, guys, I'm sorry to do this. this little, I, I, where's my cord? Okay. All right. So the music's too long. We need to trim it and make it fade out. You actually know two methods already to do that. One is drag the end of it back in, right? Like we did with the title. The other one is to use the razor blade. So I'm going to use the razor. I'm going to the toolbar in the middle, right? Right between the project window and the timeline. I'm getting that razor blade again. I see the sound is way long, and I want it to last just a little bit past that bicyclist. So I'm going a little further, and I'm going to click with the razor. So I just cut it. To be able to use the uh, 
to select the outside and delete it, I'm going to go back and get my selection tool. So I use the razor, I cut about here, and now I'm going to go back and get that arrow selection tool. I'm going to click the one on the outside and delete it. So if I play from here, this is what I'm going to get. Hmm. I think I want it a little longer. So this time I'm going to grab the end and just pull it out a bit more. And now I'm ready for a fade. Well, a fade is such a common thing to do that we're going to find a fade made just for us in the effects window. So I'm going to go back to effects again. And we don't want dissolves. We don't even want video transitions. We want audio transitions. Crossfade. Now, I know that sounds like I'm fading from one bit of sound to another, going across. And sure enough, that's what these are for. But we're going to use this one on the bottom called exponential fade. Not to crossfade, just to fade out. And this is how you use it. I'm taking exponential fade. I'm dragging all the way over here, and I'm dropping it on the tail, tail end to see that. So I literally dragged it right from here. So again, this one is in audio transitions, inside crossfade. The one I like best for this purpose is called exponential fade. And I just dragged it over the end. So this is what that's going to sound like. It's going to need one correction. It worked, it just happened too quickly. So I'm gonna grab the end of it, just like we did with the transitions earlier today. And I'm gonna make that take quite a long time, really long fade. You know something, I suddenly have the need to make the cyclist fade out. And since I'm in the effect window, I think I'm just gonna do it. I'm going to quickly go into video transitions, back to dissolve, and use the one we used plenty this morning, this afternoon, cross dissolve, and drop that here, right on the end. So this is what the end's going to look like of this movie. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to save it. I do apologize for going so far over, right? I would like to say, though, no project's done before you output it. I mean, no one could watch this. Only one person could, could work on this at a time, you know? So that's a bit of a problem. I want to make an MP4, right? And it was very similar to the thinking when we were in Audacity, who did all that stuff. And then we had to make one finished file to pass off, right? So right now, I'm going to quickly do that. Uh, again, since I plan on timing myself a little differently on Thursday, I'm going to do this kind of quick today. One thing I want to say is this yellow bar is not the world's best sign. Now, some of you have a yellow bar, some of you have a green bar, and some of you might have a red bar. But I want to say what that is. That's the render bar. Yellow means my computer could keep up with all of this stuff I did live. Green means piece of cake. My computer is like a rocket ship. It's not even flinching from all this kind of uh, layers that I made and fades that I made, right? Red means your computer is mad at you. It's like you're asking too much of me, right? You need to render all these changes you made so that you could output. Does anybody have a red bar over there on your timeline? This yeah. goes the moon. Nope. You do? No. Again, if we, if we had 10 tracks, we'd all be having it. A lot of us would be. So how do you render to be ready for output? Now, this is odd, right? You simply hit return on your Mac or enter on Windows. It will automatically rewind. And it's not just playing. It's storing data. It's looking at every time layers are stacked or anything else fancy went on. And it's kind of crunching them down the way a JPEG crunches all the layers in Photoshop into a finer unit. And once the computer has stored that data, I could safely output. At school, it really makes you render or you can't output. Today, I forgot earlier today, I was working on um, this. 
And uh, my computer at home let me output without rendering. I guess it depends on um, the condition of the machine. Anyway, you just rendered. That would have been painful if it was a two hour movie. You would have gone take a shower, you know, take a walk. There's really nothing you could do about it. You had to render and now you're ready to output. All right, if you're still joining me, let's go to the file menu and choose export. File menu, export media. All right, file menu, export media is a large window that's not too hard to use. There's a couple things you have to remember though. And by the way, all this is on the handout. It's an unusually detailed handout today. If you take a look in the top right of the export window, so again, that was file menu, export, and you chose media. The format is critical. There are many. I want you to go right to H.264. This is very nerdy. What we want is to make an MP4, right? A common video file, an MP4. The thing is that needs to be compressed further. And the compressor is called H.264. Believe it or not, the scientist types that work on this keep making different kinds of compression. This one's been big for a couple of years now. It makes a small movie that looks good and it produces an MP4, which brings me to the next change. If you chose this, then beneath it, you'll see here output name with the wrong name, .mp4. Well, the good news is it knows you want an MP4. The bad news is it thinks you're naming it after the first clip. So please click that blue name and I'd like you to change the name. I'm gonna call mine Athletes Now, and it's gonna be an MP4, and I'm saving it into today's folder, so it's with everything else. Notice down here, it already says MP4. Click Save. Now listen, guys, I hate this part of the class, even though I've taught it many times, because this is bad software design you know if you look again now it has the correct name which makes you think you're done <laughs> but you're not all you did was say when i'm done give it this name when i'm done put it in that folder but to actually be done you go to the bottom and click export which is currently grade but yep that's just bad design in my point click export Depending on the condition of your computer, this might happen very fast, or it might take a very long time. If you go to your folder now, you're actually done. In the folder, there's the finished movie. Neat little thing. All right. Here we go. Did it work? So guys, I just want to wrap up by saying a couple things. That is so essence of editing, right? We really focus mostly on technical issues, not a lot about the art form. And I do feel like to learn a lot about the art form, one should learn to shoot. And one would need a very small script, you know, a three minute story, four minute story, so that you could see how shooting affects the editing process. If you're interested in this subject deeply, there's a book that I love that is the Bible for video editors and it's called In the Blink of an Eye. Um, and it's by the, the most famous editor um, uh, who ever lived and he edited Apocalypse Now and uh, also shot a couple of movies. The movie's really short, the book, right? I mean to say, is really, really short. It's like too short. Uh, Walter Murch is the author and the brilliant editor. He's also a director in many things and he's sort of a, 
an icon in, in film. And, um, really everybody in the industry knows who Walter Murch is. He comes to New York and give talks, but the book In the Blink of an Eye explains why editing works. Because you blink and you don't ever mistake that it's the same world. And uh, we've taken this idea all the way deep into how we uh, connect clips. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. On Thursday, we're gonna do much the same, but with new footage. And I'll throw in some different ideas while we're there, just to expand upon what we began today. And then next Tuesday, the current plan is we start one that you will finish on your own and submit as a homework. Does anybody have any questions today? Yeah, Rose. I seem to be encountering a bit of an issue with Premiere, specifically in compatibility with my computer. Oh, really? Wow. So has did it not open for you or? Oh, no, it's opening. It's just my video driver is too advanced for it to recognize. No kidding. So and, and did you advanced. just load Premiere? Did you just load the newest version of Premiere? The newest version. I'm able to do everything in it properly. It's just the videos are coming out purple and green. Really? You know, there's one thing I think you might need to look at. Um, could you uh, watch this for a second? I'm still screen sharing. Mm -hmm. Under the file menu, uh, let me just be sure. Actually, sorry, let me get back in here. Under the Premiere Pro menu, under preferences, uh -huh. I wanna check something here. And I just, something I've bumped into a few times. Just give me a minute to um, reorient myself. Uh, where would the Premiere Pro be on? Windows. Is there no Premiere Pro menu? Not on Windows. So it might be under the file menu then, file menu preferences? Uh, does not seem to be. Are you sure you're in Premiere right now though and didn't accidentally click somewhere? Yep. Um, you'll have to poke around. The, the preferences menu is definitely under one of the first menus. It'll just say preferences or Premiere preferences. Maybe one of our colleagues can help us out. Hey, uh, Windows people, anybody else find that in Windows? We're looking for the preferences in Windows. No? No luck? Shoot, I don't remember. Sorry, what are we looking for? We're looking for the preferences. Rose needs to get at her preferences on Windows, but I'm on a Mac. So it's usually under the very first or second menu. Okay, I think I got it. Where? Check and edit, go all the way down. You should see preferences. Uh, preferences. I see at the bottom. Thanks, Jason. No problem. So from there, they should be the same, right? Preferences. I'm going to go into general right now because I, I have to remind myself of this, this odd little feature. All right. So um, let's see. General. Let me just speed read for a minute. Not here. Not here. Not here. General. Device control. Hmm. I'm looking for something that says GPU on it. I could be wrong about this whole venture. Hmm. It shouldn't be here. No. You know, it, it's probably, it could well have something to do with your graphics card. So I was hoping there'd be a way to change it here, which it's not. Let's see. Hmm. You know, um, Rose, I'm kind of wondering if there's a chance it's media. You know, I'm in the preferences. I've chosen media from the column on the left. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering in, on your super advanced computer, whether you'd want to check this, enable hardware accelerated decoding. Uh, hold know, on, let me find that on this. It's, it's only a hunch though. So I don't want to exaggerate um, my point of view. Um, mine was off on my computer, but if you got the feeling that, um, you know, it's an advanced feature, this one might make sense because it's, it's an accelerated option, but for you to test it, you're going to have to restart after you turn it on. Did you find this feature? 
Uh, no, it's not in the list. I see enable proxies and enable clip. You know, on the left side, you don't see the option for media. I'm in media. You are, and you don't see this enable hardware. Mm -hmm. All right, no, I don't think it's about proxies or anything. So that maybe this is a Mac specific item. Let me just see. That is the only option that I have up my sleeve right now. So I'm going to say something kind of disappointing to you. Uh, and I apologize for that. It's so computer specific. I think what you would do is you're saying it, it's turning out purple. Purple and green. Purple and green. I would do a search Adobe Premiere in quotes, right? So it doesn't mention other Adobe products, Adobe Premiere in quotes. And I'd, I'd include the word trouble. You know, and after that, it might be something like preview is purple and green, you know, for the search, something like that. I'm sure somebody out there has written and has had the same problem. And uh, if I get the time, I'll try to get a look for you before I see you on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, right now, that's all that I really got for you. I don't know what would be causing that. It says there's two system issues being that it's not recognizing either my graphics card or the video or the video driver. Right. So look, I have to say it's going to be about researching on Google mm -hmm. to see if there's a solution. You know, so um, you and I look, if there's no way to solve this and you did it let you output the movie. Yeah, the movie also came out purple and green. Did it? So, you know, one thing that I could do for you is when there is that homework. I'll just take a, a clear note to make believe that the colors are fine <laughs> so that at least you could do the homework. Mm. But let's, let's see if your research comes up with anything or mine does by Thursday. So in the meantime, I want to open the stage. Does anybody else have a question or comment? All good. All good? Chu Ying, you're good? Good. And uh, David, Brandon, Jerson? Remy, Kalik, any of you guys question for me or anything? No? Folks, that was fun. I'll see you all on Thursday. We're going to take this a little bit further. And you can see video editing, the uh, techniques are not that hard. The art form is, though, because it's really about just a whole different way of seeing parts uh, that is, is um, you, know, you know, I feel like the luckiest thing was I was asked to teach this years ago. And it gave me the opportunity to work on in a lot of small movies. You know, I've not worked on many large movies. The longest was over just over a half an hour, but small movies, hundreds. And just from seeing that many, it made it easier for me to make choices. So um, something we'll talk a little bit about on Thursday is where do you get the footage, you know, to be honest, so that you can get good at this. And, and, and I have to be honest, Really, the best way is going to be make friends with somebody who's studying cinematography. You know, to be honest, because you know, m you know, unless you're really into the camera, it's going to be hard for you to do it yourself. But I do have other choices that I'm going to make available on Thursday. So for now, I'm going to sign off, folks. Thanks for sticking around with me. We went uh, 20 minutes over voluntarily, and uh, everybody out on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all again on Thursday. See you guys. That's the extra 10 minutes. Thank you, Professor. See you, Professor. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. No, there was another one. Professor. Yes. Yes. So I don't know if this is better or this is better.